the Greater Centerville Historians, organized in the year 2000. The purpose of the organization is to preserve the history of the Township of Centerville, Cleveland and surrounding area. Gerald O'Neill, Charlie Bauer, Richard Wiegan, and myself, Kathleen Sixel, were the founding members. In 1831, the territory south of Green Bay was sold to the U.S. government by the Native Americans who had title to the land. The consideration was the promise of a reservation in another state. The Township of Centerville was established in 1850. The township had a village called Centerville. The reason for the hamlet's original name of Centerville was, in the days of the Indians, there was a trail along Lake Michigan between Manitowoc and Sheboygan. This heavenly spot was exactly at the halfway mark, so the early white man gave it the name Centerville. In 1849, the village of Centerville was surveyed and laid out in lots and blocks. The village of Centerville was renamed Heika when the Postmaster General informed the village leaders that another Centerville was located in the state. When it became time for Centerville to be renamed, a judge in Manitowoc by the name of Albert Schmidt would take kids hiking. The judge said, you can't call a town hiking, so why not make it Heika? Thus, the village of Centerville became Heika. In the early years, Centerville had the vision of becoming a lake port. To encourage ships to dock there, two piers were built into Lake Michigan. Many German immigrants arrived by schooners, and the village began to grow. The village had a brick factory, stores, schools, a Lutheran and a Catholic church, Bill, saloons, blacksmith shop, and a fire department, and a brewery. When the brewery was built, the settlement began to flourish. But when fire destroyed the brewery, the largest industry, there was no longer a need for the harbor facilities. So ended this chapter of the development of Heika. Two miles west of Heika, another settlement known as St. Wendell began to grow. It had a Catholic church, a general store with a connected dance hall, and a post office was also located in the complex, a funeral parlor, and at one time a motel. With the clearing of the forest, tilling of the land began. This prompted the exporting of lumber and grains. The farmers of Centerville looked forward to the building of a railway since they had a serious problem transporting their products. In 1873, the Milwaukee, Lakeshore, and Western Railroad was built between the settlements of Heika and St. Wendell and was named Centerville Station. In 1880, Centerville Station was renamed Cleveland after President Grover Cleveland. Cleveland, at that point in time, owes its growth to the fact that the township of Centerville was a rich farming community and farmers from miles around would bring products to be shipped by rail or ship. The village of Cleveland had several grocery stores, a furniture store, a funeral parlor, several saloons, Lutheran church, hardware stores, several gas stations, newspaper, photographer studio, several car dealerships, cheese factory, several feed mills, livestock yard and lumber yards. The biggest business was the Cleveland Co-op, which offered many types of services. With the feeling of green crops, the farmers began dairy farming. With the abundance of milk, another industry began, cheese and butter making. Local cheese factories dotted the countryside. One-room schools were usually built near the cheese factories, so children would have a ride to school when farmers brought their milk. In 1958, Heika, St. Wendell, and Cleveland incorporated into the village of Cleveland. In 1968, the Cleveland Elementary School was built. The township of Centerville has seen many farming changes, but dairy farming is still the primary vocation. Today, Cleveland is known as the seat of Lakeshore Technical College, which offers an educational alternative to four-year colleges. An ancient proverb states, 
When an old person dies, a library burns to the ground. These words were the inspiration for organizing the Greater Centerville Historians. We hope to preserve as many memories as possible. seen for quite a while and uh, he's one, one of those guys that comes from up north <laughs> and he'll introduce himself and give us a little bit of uh, rules and regulations. Go right ahead please. Okay, uh, um, Richard Otto Wiegand and um, I come from here actually but I work up north. So um, uh, we have a couple rules and I'm trying to remember what they were. One is uh, use your, give your full name when you're called upon, um, don't use nicknames. Second one is don't talk in the back when other people are speaking. In other words, try to keep the noise down a little. And the other thing is raise your hand when you want to say something. So simple rules, but it makes everything go a lot easier. And people who have been here, you know, we've all gotten used to it, so it's working pretty well. Okay. The other thing I want to say is um, I just the reason I wasn't here last month is because I was out of the country again. <clears throat> And uh, I only had two offers of women that wanted to come back with me this time. Usually I have a dozen, so I was rather disappointed. <laughs> I, must be, I must be losing my touch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good, Richard. And we have a young lady who will introduce herself and uh, provide some other information. My name is Kathy Sixel, and it is April 10th, and we have a wonderf wonderful weather today. It is about 60 degrees, and we're so happy to see all the people that are affiliated with the auxiliary um, at Cleveland. And I will let uh, Alice give the official title of what they are known as and what post and so forth. Okay, very good. Thank you. And you know what that would be? I bought some chicken wire today, so that's start number one. Okay. <laughs> but I don't know what I'm going to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, very uh, good. Okay, and uh, Richard, I'll have you introduce yourself one more time, and what if you got any plans for the spring growth? <laughs> uh, yeah, Richard Otto Wiegand. Um, no, I don't have any any gardening plans. There's a, there's a master gardeners club. Okay. Uh, affiliated with the, the the people that I work with there, and there's a garden on the on the station where oh. I work. So they just give us plenty of stuff. So I don't have to do any work. <coughs> Why should I plant anything? <laughs> okay, very good. And we'll have this gentleman introduce himself and uh, where he's uh, presently living, and uh, if he has any plans for his gardens and so forth. I'm Willard Mathias, and I live at 1018 Juniper Street, Cleveland, and I've got. The set onions all planted already, two pounds, and uh, they're coming up. And uh, what else? So next week I'll be up north at the cottage. Okay, very good. Thank you. And who do you have here, please? Hi, I'm Jerry Leonard. We live at Sheboygan, town of Sheboygan. Okay. And my only gardening is to keep the lawn in shape. I'm not a gardener. <laughs> very good. <laughs> no failures there. Okay, go right ahead, please, ma'am. Audrey Earl, and I live in St. Nazian's. Okay. Uh, I live in apartments. I don't have a garden, but I help my daughter with hers. Oh, very good. She appreciates that, I'm sure. And who do you have here, please? Marie Leonard. I try to be a gardener as when it comes to flowers, but I don't do so well. <laughs> okay. I kill most of them. <laughs> and Jerry won't help me try to do any better. He says you're on your own. Yeah. <laughs> and who do you have here, please? Kathy Yanning. We live in Cleveland, but we're still trying to clean off the flower pits and get the lawn raked. <laughs> okay, okay, that's a job also. Yeah, big job. And who do you have here, please? Melvin Yanning. I live in 871 Linden Street. Okay, and you help the, the wife a little bit? Well, I 
do what I can. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, and who do you have here, please? I'm Alice Mathias. I live with Willie at 1018 Juniper Street. And uh, my favorite thing at this time of the year is taking off the bark and the leaves and stuff and see the new growth coming up. Yes, yes. That's Looking always refreshing, isn't it? Day, something new. Yes. <laughs> And who do you have here, please? I'm Arlene Schneider, and I live at Westview, at the corner of Westview and Crown Truck X. Okay. And I don't do the gardening. My husband does that, and he does the raking. Oh, okay. Very good. You just sort of sit there and boss a little bit, perhaps? That's right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and who do you have here, please? I'm Bernice Dassler from Cleveland. I live down at the Lake, Lake Shore okay. Drive. Okay. I've got my flower beds of that all cleaned out. Okay. All I'm set. to go up north this weekend and clean them out up there. Okay. Very good. Looks like you're going to be pretty busy, though. <laughs> and who do you have here, please? I am Madeline Kolb. I live right in Cleveland on 810 Linden Street. And I have part of the lawn raked, but my kids are coming on Saturday and help me finish the rest. Wonderful. <laughs> and that's about it, I guess. Okay. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. And who do you have here, please? Hi, I'm Lorraine Schwinn. And I live on 1017 South Cleveland Road. And as far as gardens concerned, I have a big garden, but I haven't even started yet to look at it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and the lawn is too big to rake. <laughs> <laughs> you need some help. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and who do you have here, please? I'm Edith Litzy. I live at 695 East Washington. And the only thing that I have done so far, I planted a lot of bulbs last fall, and I covered them all with wire because they tell me the squirrels dig them up, so oh. I might have to start taking those wires off now when they start shooting up, but they yeah. aren't up yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hope the squirrels didn't get them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and who do you have here, please? Laura's Chris, I live in Cleveland. Okay. And uh, when it comes to gardening, you know, my husband isn't there no more to do it, so I'm trying to get my son to do it. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Wish me luck. Wish you luck. <laughs> okay. And who do you here, please? I'm Kathy Wagner, and I live down at 334 East Washington Avenue. Okay. I have a very big yard and a very big garden, and I have done nothing so far except enjoy the crocus that are blooming outside and oh. the daffodils that are blooming. Yes. But I have done no raking and no yard work, period. Okay. It's... it's Waiting for me. Okay. <laughs> Spring is still quite young yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. What do you have here, please? I'm Florence Crest from 350 East Washington in Cleveland. Okay. And the gardening and the yard work is all his duty. And ah. I take care of my class. Okay. Very good. Thank you. And I enjoy them. Good. And you, sir, your name, please? I'm Walter Crest. <clears throat> Excuse me. I live at 350 East Washington. And the tulips are up, and I have 20 geraniums coming in the basement. Whoa, ready for ready planting out there, huh? Plant pretty soon. Good. Wait for the frost to take off a little bit. And, right. Okay, and who do you have here, please? I'm uh, Fred Jacoby from Manitowoc, and the gardening is my wife's department, and I'm the helper. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, Fred. You're honest. <laughs> and you, sir? Charlie Bauer from Newton, and... Uh, I gave up gardening quite a few years ago. Okay. <laughs> very good. So there's none to be had. None to be had. No. Okay, very good. Well, my name is, of course, Jerry O'Neill. I live on uh, Range Line Road in the town of Newton. And myself, I am a helper for my wife also. I have no green thumb whatsoever in my family. So we'll go back to Kathy here, and maybe she can indicate what we're about today. What we're about today, well, number one, we, I sent out this card and I got this picture from Alice Mathias. And Alice, I'll let you identify the ladies and the years. Okay. And my question right away is, uh, do they still do this Gold Star, Gold Star Mothers thing on Memorial Day? They're all deceased. Oh, but I mean, um, there, aren't there other ones? One. One? Okay. Okay, I'll go right over to Alice then. Thank you. Got a lady here who has some uh, knowledge of things, and she'll start out by identifying herself. Okay, I'm Alice Mathias. I've uh, been a member of the auxiliary since it was chartered, and that was way back in November 11th of 1950. Okay. And at that time, there were 29 chartered members, okay. and most of those ladies are either passed on or didn't join or went to a different auxiliary. Right now, of those 29, we have eight that are still members. Okay. And through the years, well, I guess I held just about every office there was. Okay. I was treasurer for quite a few years till Arlene took over, and now <laughs> she's been for quite a few years. 
that's always a job everybody doesn't, right. they just don't like that treasurer's job. Okay. And anyhow about this picture. Yes, could you I, hold it up so that I could see it also as you speak about it? According to the garb that they're wearing with the hats and everything, we figure that was probably from 1953 possibly. Okay. In that era. And the ladies that are on there at that time, uh, four of them belong to the auxiliary. Okay. One, the first one was Alma Kane. All right. And then there was a Mrs. Stuckman. That would be like Ray Stuckman's mother and All Gilbert right. Stuckman. She never belonged to the auxiliary, but she was here for this picture. All right. And for this little uh, doings at the end. Yes. And the next lady is Mary Klein. Okay. Everybody would remember her. And then Barbara Hansen. All the Hanson boys' mother, and the last lady was Mrs. Schill. She lived in St. Wendell. All right. She was like Arnold Schill and Victor Schill's mother. Okay. So those were the four Gold Star mothers that we had at that time. And now since then, in the Vietnam War, uh, Jimmy Gahagan got killed, and then his mother was a member of our auxiliary at that time, but then she became a Gold Star mother. So right now, she's the only Gold Star mother that we have left. Okay. And Go right ahead, please. And then there was a Mrs. Mahusky from Newton okay. who joined the auxiliary later on, and she was a Gold Star mother. But all those ladies are gone except Mrs. Gahagan. Okay. And she lives in Kiel, and she's not a active member. All right. You know, she's I've got uh, two questions. One is uh, the area that they're standing uh, nearby there where they have this memorial looks like in front of them where is that located that's right at the Cleveland Park okay right next to the VFW Hall all right okay mm -hmm. and the next question I have for uh, could you explain what the gold star mothers represent okay the gold star mothers in that point all lost a son or a daughter in service okay and then they were, pre we always honored them at Memorial Day, and they always went along to the cemeteries. Okay. And at the uh, park, then they always had a special Memorial Day thing where the Gold Star Mothers always had a, like a wreath made into a form of a gold star okay. with gold flowers, and they always put that at the uh, monument. Okay, very good. And they were always, you know, and then they always had like a luncheon after. Okay. Now, does these ladies that are shown there, uh, <coughs> did they have more than one son or daughter that was killed in the war? No, they each only had one. One, okay. I know this Mrs. Uh, Hansen, I think, had quite a few sons that were in service, right? Six yeah. Six, six <laughs> sons that were in service. Really? Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mary Klein, I'm not sure how many of her children had, were in, I'm not really familiar with. And Alma Keen, no, she was, her son, which is ironic, her son, she, <laughs> Mrs. Cain was a Stoltenberg. Okay. From the store. Yes. She was a sister of Mr. Stoltenberg, anyhow. All and right. Mrs. Cain's son is now married to, to Carol Stoltenberg. The daughter, Earl, but oh, now really? she passed away like two years ago. Yeah. And that was this Gold Star mother's son that Carol married. Oh. I think his name is Ray, right? Ray, 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 Ray right. And now he stays, he's living with Earl, yeah, Earl Jr. Uh, is pertaining to, uh, where, do you know where these uh, boys or ladies had died that were part of this Gold Mother thing? Do you know where if they was in the Pacific or in Germany or anything like that? I know it's a tough question probably. I don't, the only one that I know that Mrs. Kane's son was like a pilot, right? And he was missing in action. They never did find his body. Oh, really? Right? Am I right on that? Because there was some, um, they had something at the Vets Club that they had found, uh, sort of like a picture of the cemetery that was over in Holland, was it? Oh. Holland. Okay. And, and it just about had the spot where the plane went down, evidently. And they gave that thing to Ray Jr. now, the one that lives in Cleveland now, okay. the son of her. All right. And maybe Jerry knows about the other families. Or Willie, I don't know. Do you know anything? <coughs> Mrs. Shields, Melvin Yaney, and Mrs. Shields' son died in the Battle of the Bulge. 
Okay. He's buried on the Luxembourg Cemetery. Over uh, in Luxembourg. Oh, really? I've seen the grave twice. Okay. Oh. All right. Thank you. Here, who will identify himself, and he's got a question or something. Uh, I'm Fred Jacoby, and I'm I'm uh, not sure about this, Mrs. Stuckman. Uh, you said Ray's mother. I uh, Albert was in, and I don't know if there's, I don't, I don't think anyone, any of the Stuckman boys lost their lives. I think this Mrs. Stuckman, that was a Gold Star mother, was from uh, just west of Northeim on whatever road that is, uh, the county trunk up to Newton there. Okay, just one second, thank you. There's a farm there. All right. One of the Lutze boys is married into that family, uh, one of Norman Lutze's sons, uh, Ralph, is married to a Stuckman girl. And uh, I'm pretty sure that's where... Wasn't that, that wasn't Elvin, Elbert's dad either then? I mean, mother then either? I, there were, no. No, it wasn't Elbert's mother. And the only one thing I can think of is Donald Stuckman was the one that died. And I think his father's name was Otto. Okay. And they come from down in the Newton area. All right. Okay, very good. That's helpful. Thank yeah, you very much. That's all I know. Thank you. Be able to add a little more information? Go right ahead, please. Uh, Terry Leonard, uh, Cleveland VFW. Yes, sir. If, if my memor memory is correct, uh, Sergeant Lester Hansen, he was killed, killed in New Guinea in 1943. Okay. And I think he was the first one to die from the Cleveland area, right? And I remember I was in grade school at St. Wendell. Okay. And, uh, <coughs> his brother was in class with me. Okay, very good. Yep, very good information. Thank you. Thank you. Who had raised his hand? Apparently, he's got some information. Go right ahead, please. Melvin Yanish and uh, Lester Hansen was killed in the Battle of Bino. In the Battle in, of Bino? In New Guinea. Okay. I had a cousin who was married to a man who was in that same battle. Okay. And there used to be a Mr. Ross, Roger Ross, that lived in the trailer court. He also was in that battle. All right, very good, thank you. you here who would uh, like to say a few words and identify yourself, please. I'm Audrey Ertle, and I, I belong to the Cleveland Auxiliary. Yes. And I've been a char I was one of the charter members. Wonderful. And I've been president, this is the second time I was president, but the second time now has lasted at least six years. <laughs> <laughs> I've held quite a few of the other jobs, except I've never been treasurer. You've never been treasurer? No. Okay, well, thank you very much. Very good information. <laughs> Would like to identify yourself and indicate her positions. I'm Marie Leonard, wife of Jerry Leonard. Okay. He's always been very active in the post, so I had no choice but to be <laughs> come after down here. Uh, Memorial Day is still always Memorial Day for us. Okay. The guys get up, they start at the first cemetery where that Stuckman uh, gravesite is okay. at 8 o'clock in the morning, and I think this will be their last year. It'll be their 50th year, ah. 51st, and some of these marchers are getting uh, a little bit old. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Memorial Day is always dedicated to the the round of the cemeteries, and okay. then we have the final service of that day is at that monument that's oh, shown really? on that picture here. Okay. And they still always have a gold star wreath that somebody places at the memorial in honor okay. of the gold star mothers. Okay, very good, thank you. Good, good information. I'm Kathy Yenig. I also belong to the Ladies Auxiliary. I think I am the newest member, so I do not hold or have not held any offices. <laughs> um, I was able to join because of my husband being in service. Okay. Nova. All right. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And, well, like I said, I was one of the chartered members, too, and been pretty active all the years. I noticed in the records the first year when they elected officers, I was a guard. You were a guard. And that's one that you said you were supposed to sit by the door, and if anybody came late, the yeah. door was locked, and they had a knock, and oh, you really? had to go look and see if they were <laughs> admitted or not. Okay. But that job sort of fell down by the wayside. We don't, we aren't that formal anymore. But oh, when they right. started out, 
then they were we were supposed to use flags and okay. you know, everything else, yes. but we we didn't have enough members to carry all the flags. So I just put it that way. Okay. And I uh, was president, I don't know, once or twice, and I was treasurer for I don't know how many years, lots of years. Okay. What else was I? I know I was trustee, and always on the committee that does the fundraising. I've been right. on that for years and years and years. Okay. And I guess that's about it. Okay, very good. Okay. Thank you. Sure, we'd like to see a few words and identify ourselves. Please. I'm Arlene Schneider, and I am presently the treasurer of the auxiliary. Congratulations. And I am enjoying the meeting with the women. Very good. And the help that we all get. Okay, and that was the only office you've had at that this time? I'm still holding it, yes. You're still holding it, good. <laughs> <laughs> Six years too, right? Could be, I don't count. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep continuing. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Bernice Dassler, and I also was a charter member. Oh, okay. And I also hey. think I've had every office in the place. Okay. <laughs> the building. Um, we do a lot of uh, volunteer work. Okay. Especially we've been active with uh, Red Cross blood banks. Okay. In Cleveland and in two different banks in Sheboygan. Oh, boy. And, um, two shots. What? Flu shots you get. Oh, yeah. I get flu shots. Okay. All right. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The question. Go right ahead, please. I'm Kathy Sixel, and I would like to ask Bernice if um, she is, if the giving of the flu shots is affiliated with the auxiliary or if the, she does this as an RN or both. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'd uh, offer to say both because we get credit for volunteering through the auxiliary and the VNA. Okay. okay. And uh, there was something about you had a lot of hours you uh, volunteer for here? I don't even remember what they are. <laughs> <laughs> we're last, busy. We were really busy. Last year she logged in 72 hours. Really? Just flu shots. Wow. Oh, more than that. Wow. Well, really? that's how many we yeah. yeah. Very good. Very good. We, we want you people around a long time. <laughs> so you you, you always give lot. back to the community, don't you? Yes. Thank you. I'd like to say a few words. She'll identify herself. Please go right ahead. I'm Adeline Kolb, and I belong to the auxiliary. I was a charter member. Okay. And good. I think I held all the offices too. Okay. I was president twice, and I was treasurer for years, and I was secretary and trustee, and right now I'm in the guard. I don't know what I'm guarding, but at least. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, years ago, when our kids were little, which is like about 40, 50 years ago, we yeah. had a party for, and Santa Claus would come. And he would give him, and we have movies, and he'd give him a little bag of candy and nuts. And of course, with TV coming, after a while, the kids didn't come anymore like they used to sure. because it wasn't anything new to them. Correct. So now we have a gift of the heart tree at the Cleveland Bank. Okay. And we get um, names from, um, you know, what is it, the Manitou County Social, Social Services. And okay. we get about 50 names that the needy children would like to have gifts of some kind. So right. they give us, they don't give us the names, but they do give us um, oh, what the boys and girls would like and their age. Okay. And then we put it on little slips and we hang them on a tree at Cleveland Bank. And then people come in and get that and then they'll buy that for the child. Wonderful. And bring it back and then... This lady will pick up the gifts again and distribute them for us. Wonderful. Which, uh, otherwise, they probably would not have much of a Christmas. This right. way, at least, right. we know they get one gift. Sure, sure. And what else would we do? Years ago, we had Easter hunts at the clubhouse where okay. we'd hide the eggs out and under the straw by the trees and down by the river, and it really was fun. Although, nowadays, we don't do that either anymore. What do we do for Easter? Nothing, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but um, we did have a lot of fun for the kids. Wonderful. Again, giving back to the community all the time. Right. Thank Try you. To. Very good. Thank mm -hmm. you. Okay. Would uh, like to say a few words, and she'll identify herself. Okay. My name is Lorraine Schwinn, and I'm also a member of the auxiliary, and I think I belong to that now 25 years, and okay. about wow. I've had several different jobs, and I think 20 years we've been delivering fruit baskets. And this year we delivered 23 to Manitowoc, Sheboygan, and in the Cleveland area. Okay. And we go to our nursing homes and then to local people that live around the area. 
and the ladies come in the morning and we make up the fruit baskets and then um, those people that are from the village take them and deliver them to the village and I take them and uh, my husband and I deliver them to Manitowoc, Sheboygan okay. and the surrounding areas. So last year we made 80 miles. Wow. So we go to the five, five different nursing homes and we put um, oranges, bananas, tangerines, pears and apples Great. and candy. Mm -hmm. And we put them on plastic plates and then we wrap them up in uh, paper and put ribbon around, and then that's the way we deliver them. Okay. Could you name off those five nursing homes that you do yep. uh, deliver to? Riverbend in Manitowoc, Morningside, Greendale, in Shebo Morningside and Greendale in Sheboygan. All right, good. And Sacred Heart Apartments in Manitowoc. All right. And then we have a Riverbend in Manitowoc. Okay. That would be it. And the other ones are just local people around the area, either Newton or Cleveland, Mosul, okay. towards Sheboygan. And those people that are local, are they, uh, they can't uh, get around too well? Is that what's, well, uh, yeah, what qualifies some of them, them for yeah. this? Yeah, and those that are quite old, okay. the elderly. All right. Some that are 90 years old, we take them baskets. Okay, very good. Thank you very much again. Here, but she's going to confess something. <laughs> <laughs> well, I... I, ha I did not live, I'm Edith Lutzi, and I did not live in Cleveland until 18 years ago, but, okay. and I just, I had, a, I had uncles that were in the service, but I never actually belonged to the auxiliary. Okay, very good. Thank you for confessing that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't belong to the auxiliary either. Okay. But, but I think I did, <coughs> did my duty. Okay. Roland was in the service, my son was in Vietnam War. Okay. So very good. I knew how to suffer. You know how, to, how that works. Yeah, All right. right. Thank you very much. I'd like to have your identification, please. I'm Kathy Wagner, and I'm also not a member of the auxiliary here, but I have been a part of a lot of their activities. Okay. And one of the nicest things that ever happened to me was done by the VFW Post 8974. I don't know if you want to know about that or not. Sure, but right ahead. Please, go right ahead. They gave me a plaque. They gave you a plaque. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you got it along. Wonderful. You bet. Can you just hold it up a little bit, please? That'd be great. Just let me get <clears> the <throat> reading. Okay. It was a total surprise. Okay. What year was it? 1967. There must be a story behind that. Go right ahead, please. Well... First of all, I was a Girl Scout leader, and my co-leader was a member of the auxiliary, and we made all these little table favors and all this kind of stuff, and nobody ever said a word about it. And then when I when we were invited to this, this was a Christmas party. No, it was a anniversary or something, I think. I don't know. <laughs> I have a write-up from the paper. Okay. It was a VFW anniversary. It was the 20th anniversary of Cleveland Post 8974. And was highlighted at the clubhouse Saturday with a speech by Assemblyman Harold Fraley and presentation of a certificate to Mrs. Kathy Wagner, Cleveland Village Clerk, citing her for outstanding, distinguished, and meritorious service to her community. And this is signed by Ralph Yost and okay. Thomas Gretz. All right. And anyway. I didn't know a thing about it until it was presented to me, and it was a total surprise. Wonderful. A, a secret well kept. <laughs> <laughs> well, you must be very well deserving of that honor. Thank well, you very much. It Kay. meant a lot to me. Thank I you. have this hanging on my wall in my house, actually. Okay. And what year again was that? It's signed the 20th day of January, 1967. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much, Kathy. You're welcome. Here, would like to say a few words? Go right ahead, please. I'm Florence Kress, and my husband was in service, but he joined the American Legion when he came back. Okay. So I didn't belong to All right. vets or anything. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Sure. Who raised her hand? She has something to say. Go right ahead, please. I'm Marie Leonard. I forgot to mention all the offices I held 
and Jerry and I were both very active on the 8th district level in the uh, post and auxiliary okay. and also on the state level offices. Okay. And he's a past 8th past district commander and I'm a past 8th district auxiliary president. Okay. And very we good. had a very, very fun year, <laughs> right? <laughs> and Howard Vogel always called that the VFW baby from Rice Lake. <laughs> I was I was district president. <laughs> so when the kids were the two older ones were little but they said, How come Howard Vogel always calls Carla Rice Lake? <laughs> well, <laughs> we had good times with the VFW on the other. Now, when uh, you both were uh, nominated or uh, elected, rather, to those posts, what year was that? It wasn't the same year. 68, 69. Oh, yeah, Carla was born in 69, 68. so it was, yeah, 68. 68, 1968? Mm -hmm. And, and uh, Leonard, Jerry. yours was also that same year? No. Okay. My name is Jerry Leonard, okay. Cleveland VFW Post. I was elected district commander in uh, June of 1972 and served until June of 1973. Very good. And after that, I was department judge uh, inspector. Okay. And then in 1984, I had the honor of being the state buddy poppy chairman. Wow, wow. Good. Thank you. Can I explain a few things and identify yourself, please? Go right ahead. I'm Audrey Ertle. I'm the president of the auxiliary. And every year we do poppies in uh, May. Okay. Uh, we, the whole month of May. All right. And we, uh, the last couple of years we've even had a poppy princess. She's all dressed up with a little crown and she, wear, she carries a basket of poppies. And whenever there's any doings of any kind, she tries to sell poppies to people. Okay, now this is a younger lady or a girl? It's She's about 10, 12 years old. And she's selected by somebody or some way? Uh, her, well, the, the lady that the poppy chairman uh, takes care of it, and it's okay. usually like her niece or somebody like that. All right. Now, you ladies, do you hand out poppies or make, uh, does somebody make that for you No, people? we buy them. You uh, buy them. From you. the state. Okay. And uh, I don't know, we we usually sell about $100 worth. You know, we ask people for donations. We have canisters. Yes. And, and with the poppies with rubber bands around, and they're sure. set in different places. All right. And uh, the people, when we have our ham dinner, they're on the table for table decoration, or sure. the poppy princess sells them. Okay. So uh, that's how... We uh, see, and the poppies are made by veterans in veterans' hospitals. Oh, really? Okay. And then <coughs> okay. We buy them from the department. All right. Okay. Now, the poppies represent what? What does that really mean as far as this poppy? Well, it started back uh, World War. I think it was World War One, and uh, it was called on Flanders Field. There's yes. a poem and it made it into a song, okay. and they tell about the poppies on Flanders Field. I think the poppies grew on this field, and then the soldiers were buried there, okay. and that's how the poppies started. Okay, and it, its function is to do what? Raise some funds for raise the... Mo See, we can use any money that we raise from the poppies, we can use for veterans. Okay. Uh, any, other or any other money that we... Uh, have to pay bills or things that comes out of the general right, fund. Right. But if we spend money for veterans, that can come out of this poppy fund. Oh, I see. That's strictly for the veterans. All right. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Drew was smiling, and she'd like to <laughs> identify herself and give us some information. This is Alice Mathias. This is. <laughs> 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 okay. What well, I, I have a little comment in my little book here. Yeah. Way back in, we must have started this in 1952. And I remember at that time, we used to have poppy girls that went around the village. At that time, a lot of them, we never had a daughter, but a lot of them had young daughters. Oh, And they okay. would take different sections of the village and go around. Really? And we made caps for these little girls. Okay. I remember doing that at uh, Audrey Kinnear's house. 
fancy little ones, and then uh -huh. we had a couple little poppies, and they'd always wear those, and that would be good identification for sure, them. Sure, sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. And do you have anything there that you're looking at that you'd like to read us or anything? Or later on, I would like to a few little comments okay. that I wrote in here. I yellowed them out. There isn't. Uh, okay. Well, when <laughs> when you're ready, then you let me know. Should I do it right now? If you want to do it right now. Sure. When our our first meeting was held in uh, October of 1950, and we had that at Drolls. Now, where is this place? That used to be on uh, X and. What other street Double is that? X. Double, X. Double X. X. Yeah, and Union Road. And that's a place that burned down. Okay. Okay. Yes. And our at that time our annual dues was two fifty. Okay. And of that two fifty, we always had to pay state dues and national dues out of that. So our auxiliary at that time when we paid two fifty, we probably got back fifty cents that would go into our general fund. Oh really? Probably maybe a little more than fifty cents. I don't remember just then. And our, uh, we starting to make money. The first thing that we did, we were starting to sell cards. Okay. And vanilla and pepper. And we were had enough money at that time. We purchased a banner bear, which is our big flag that says Cleveland Auxiliary. All right. And that was purchased in 1953. And in 1952, our auxiliary increased to 40 members. Great. And our first president going back was K. Ewald. And K. she left. Now, K, was that, spe that's K A Y? No, K, K A Y, yeah, K and then E W A L D. Okay, thank you. She was a Gretz girl, one of the, from the Gretzes from the tavern. All right. And then she moved to California in 1953, so we had a little potluck farewell dinner. All right. And Loretta Wimler was president at that time. And she was elected to be the 8th District Junior Vice President. Whoop, my nose wants to run. And uh, right after that, we had enough money, and then we bought a stove and the refrigerator for the new clubhouse. Okay. That was like in 55. And uh, at that time, we purchased 24 card tables. We talked about those yes, last Yes, those, those famous card tables. Yeah. Yes. And they're still in use. This letter says after 15 years they were still going. <laughs> and um, we uh, gave American flag to the newly organized Boy Scouts of Cleveland. That was like in 1956. Great. And the Zoe helped with the Mobile Chess X-ray unit. That was when I think the polio thing. Okay. And then it also said we used to lease our dishes out to different people. I was surprised at that. They, I got, they got dishes in here. But they quit doing that because uh, it seemed they were coming out on the short end. Oh. They would never get back, get back everything oh. they sent. <laughs> and uh, at that time, this would have been in 56, they formed a Red Cross volunteer unit. Bernice was talking about that. Okay. And we used to have like four or five women going two days uh, Every time they had a blood mobile, that was like four times a year. All right. And at that time, then we gave flags to St. Wendell School, Champion School. I don't know where Champion School is. Oh, okay. Center School and Point River Schools. Okay. And our first Gold Star mother, Mrs. Schill, died in 56. Okay. And the volunteers began working with a cancer program in Manitowoc. There were they used to roll bandages and stuff. I never was oh. into that. Okay. And when the men had their 10th anniversary, the ladies gave them a gift of $10. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Very good. And that's when Bernice, right after that, Bernice became president over here in 1957. <laughs> And at that time, we gave flags for Spring Valley and the Cleveland Mary Masters 4-H Club. That was about the time, I think, when all these little organizations were starting, a lot sure. of little 4-H uh, sure. clubs. Great. And did anybody ever hear of Senator Wiley years back? Oh. Okay, we got a flag from him, which was flown over the White House, and that was for the clubhouse. Oh, great. And... Uh, and, well, he talked about Howard Vogel 
he, we gave him a gift. He was elected department commander. That was a member of the post, a very active member. Okay. And in March of uh, 58, we sent the Lakeland Reporter to Community Boys in Service. That was our little Cleveland paper years back. Oh, was, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was the name of that paper again? The Lakeland Reporter. Okay. Does that still continue or not? No. Oh. It hasn't been around for a long, long time. Okay. And we also helped Elmer Lutze receive a seeing eye dog. Wonderful. Through the help of the post and the, the auxiliary. Oh, man. And I was surprised at this, too. In 1958, Alma Kane, one of our Gold Star Mothers, and Selma Bogle, attended the National Convention in New York. Wow. Two of our little ladies going all the way to New York. <laughs> <laughs> that was good for them. Yeah. And then we started in 59, we started the recipe book project. Probably some of the ladies have those books yet. No. And, uh, Could you tell us a little bit what that involved? The ladies, whoever wanted to submit recipes, yes. would do it. And this one, Irene Fiddler, I think, was mainly in charge of that. And then they had one published. It was a little book about that thick, right? Nice size book. I don't remember who printed it. And what we sold, I noticed later on, they sold them for $1.50 okay. from $2, trying to get rid, they had a rid of yeah. the last few of them. <laughs> okay. So they made nice money on that, I guess. And um, in, fifth, in 1960, Loretta Wimler, and Burnett Lorfeld went to the National Convention in Detroit. Oh. I didn't believe, I would never have the guts to go alone to some place <laughs> like that. And uh, let's see what, Barbara Hansen, one of our Gold Star Mothers, died in 61. And we kept getting new members right along, it seemed like. It, but you always, the, one of the goals of the VFW is trying to get 100%. Yes. And if you lose a member, then you're always supposed to replace her again, that you're yeah. back to the 100. And a lot of times that's hard to do. Yes. And we, members helped with a triple shot, shot clinic in 62. Was the triple shot the polio shot? No? Tetanus. Okay, okay. And we gave an American flag for St. Wendell's School and a set of encyclopedias at wow. that same time on American history. Wow, great. And then Marie was president after that, and our Jews were raised to 425. And we gave the Girl Scout that was just new in 63, were they, Kathy? Mm -hmm. Pretty new. Yeah. And then we gave them a flag and St. Isidore's School. Okay. And a pla flag for the Brownie Girl Scout troop. Wow. And and then we also donated money for the to the post to help defray the cost of the flags that they put up on Memorial Day and uh, wow. Fourth of July. They're American flags, so we helped them with that. We never had a whole lot of money. I'm surprised we could do all this with that. <laughs> and uh, <coughs> what else? Okay. And well, and then we also one of the things Irene Fiddler always took care of sending out cards to anybody that was sick in the community. Okay. Sick or sympathy cards to the ones that passed on. Sure. And uh, we also purchased a wheelchair, chairs it said, with okay. card party money. We always had card parties. Yes. And we bought a humidifier for a dehumidifier, stainless steel warmer, what have you? A new Whoa. walker. Whoa. The ladies bought. <laughs> and well, then Adeline, did you want to talk a little bit about the Halloween party? Party? Sure. I remember nothing about. Well, years <laughs> back, we always had Halloween parties for the kids, where we would take them in the basement, oh, yeah. and we'd make it look real spooky down there, and we'd cook the spaghetti, <laughs> and we'd have grapes right for yeah. eyes, and what else did we have? <laughs> a lot of spooky things. <laughs> And at that time, we used to get such nice crowds. Yes. And same with the Christmas party, like Adeline. Oh. And then they just dwindled. There weren't that many kids interested anymore in sure. coming or whatever. And that's why we basically discontinued those sure. things. And the egg on too. Okay. It just didn't pay to have them. Okay. I remember my girl got you. Presently, we donated to the village flags 
that are flying. Oh. Our auxiliary donated money toward okay. them. All right. Now that is flying at a, one location, or is this no, on the streets? Down the street. Oh, really? I'm not sure how many there are. Oh. At least, I think, around 20. Wow, but, that's fantastic. Um, I think they add to the beauty of the village. Yes, it does. Very nice. Thank you. Like to identify herself, and she says she's got something to uh, reminisce about or talk about. Go right ahead. I'm Marlene Schneider, and I remember the we gave money for the flags, but they were on account of the golfing tournament that we had, at, and uh, also the man that was standing in with the golf club that the village put in. Okay, where is that? That was in the flower bed that the group from the flower garden garden club may put in. Okay, okay. And yeah, our so flags went to, to that the garden to the garden club when they put it up with the oh. rest of it. And what year was that about? Do you Last remember? Last year. Last year. For the golf for the golf tournament, tournament. from yeah. oh, okay at Whispering uh, Street. Streets. Wonderful, thank you. And she has some information. Go right ahead, please. Well I know we also gave money when uh, Saint Nasians had their big storm. Uh -huh. We donated to the storm, yes. And then when the when the Cleveland uh, first responders, and I think it was it Newton too, or just Cleveland. I don't remember, but we gave. They were bu uh, they were buying first responder trucks, and they needed oh, okay. new equipment inside. Yeah, sure, sure. And I know Cleveland for sure, but I'm not sure about Newton. We also gave money to help su uh, to supply insights for the first responders. Wow, great. Thank you very much. We tried to, well, and when Sheboygan yes. had their flood, we gave money okay. to the uh, flood emergency in Sheboygan. Oh, man. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. She was uh, smiling, and she had a lot of information today. She can go right ahead, please. I'm Alice Messias. I was just going to give a little uh, thing on the blood drive. Yes. Years back, like in possibly 53, the yes. ladies started, and we used to work at the uh, armory building in Cheboygan. There would be like 10 ladies going two different days, okay. and at that point they had like these big, four big blood drives a year. Okay. And uh, the ladies would label bottles, like the plastic bottles where they keep the blood in, and mm -hmm. they'd escort, and we always did work like that. Okay. But 10 ladies for every quarter we'd go. And then after I don't know how many years, and the Red the Red Cross could not have the blood bank at the armory anymore okay. because it wasn't air conditioned. Okay. And then we started work, and before that, you know, when did that? But anyhow, somewhere along the way, the ladies could not label bottles anymore because of health reasons or whatever, mm -hmm. they have to be paid volunteers. Oh. So now when we volunteer, we still work at Sheboygan at the Red Cross office. They have that, every, we always volunteer for the first Thursday of the month. Mm -hmm. And then we only work either in the canteen or the registration. Okay. All that labeling is all done by paid help By paid now. help, okay. Yeah. Sure. And then every four times or so, then they have it at a church where they got the big blood drives, and okay. then the ladies, uh, there. there's only usually three that volunteer. All right. And they have all together, and there it's an air condition. They used to have it at the Emo Maisie Hall. Okay. But because they had a conflicting with their bingo, they didn't let the Red Cross meet there anymore. Okay, could I ask that Emo Maisie Hall, where was that located? In Sheboygan. In Sheboygan, okay. Okay, and then from there now, there a church, I'm not sure what the name of that church is. It's a Lutheran church that volunteered to give that their hall free usage for the Red Cross. Okay. So they always have it there now, their oh. big drive. All right, very good. Thank you, Alice. Okay. Uh, see your name, please. Kathy Yenig. And just, uh, again, talking about the blood drive, I'm going to just refresh a little bit about the Cleveland blood drive. Uh, we also, several of us... I needed a new battery. <laughs> Getting old like I am. Right ahead, please. Okay, on the Cleveland blood drive, um, whereas for, for Sheboygan, uh, when we work at the office in Sheboygan, we only need four people. Uh, okay. For Cleveland, we, need, we always need six people. 
we also cover the donor room in Cleveland. Okay. In Sheboygan, we don't have to do that. All right. As well as the canteen and registration. Okay. Very okay. good. Very good. Thank you. And that happens yes. uh, about four times a year. We four, have quarterly drive in type thing. Yeah. All right. We just had one on Monday. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Was that over here at uh, Cleveland well, Church, St. John, St. Peter? Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Thank you. Yep. You'd like to say a few words. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Jerry Leonard. I'd like you to refer back to Melvin Yaney and ask him how many pints of blood he has donated over his lifetime. I will do that. Thank you. The record on his back. Go right ahead, please. <laughs> Melvin Yaney, and I have donated 20 gallons and three pints. <sighs> wow. 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 Keep it up, folks. Keep it up. Very <laughs> good. Quite a record, quite a record. Thank you very much, Jerry, and congratulations, sir. <laughs> congratulations, thank you. Good job, sir. I, I would uh, like to have you ask Bernice and Lorraine. They're both faithful blood givers. A lot okay, of times they great. work, and they'll, in between, if they aren't busy, they'll give their blood to them. They've okay. been doing that for years. Very good, so I'll talk to them. I don't know how these. many gallons they've uh, All right, have. thank you, Mel, mm -hmm. thank you. There's a lady here, and she's apparently got a record of some kind also. <laughs> Go right ahead. No, I ain't got a record. You ain't got a record, I a just, felony or <laughs> I'm Arlene Schneider, and I yes. don't have a record, really. Okay. I just give blood. You do blood. You I know how many? I get a thank you card at Christmas from the Red Cross. Oh, my I goodness. I gave a gallon. I'm working on my second gallon. Wonderful. Very good for you. Thank you. I'm Bernice Dassler, and I really don't know how many cards I have at home. <laughs> I just finished another one now. I think I must have like three cards. So that indicates three gallons. Three gallons. Two gallons a piece. Two gallons a piece. Uh, six three gallons. Uh. Six gallons. Wonderful. And there's, I don't. I'm not really sure. That's giving Years ago, we did it down in nursing school <laughs> okay. to make money. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> By the way, nursing school. Now you were uh, you were a nurse, or uh... yes, I am. Still am. You still are. Yeah. Okay. Could you give us a little bit there, please, uh, as far as your maybe a little, where you went to school and where you work, if anything? I'm an RN. I went to school at what used to be St. Agnes School in Fond du Lac, which is now Marion College. Oh, okay. And uh, I've been working. Well, when did I retire? In '94, I think something like that. Okay. 1994. Very good. And I've been volunteering. Wonderful. Thank you again. You're welcome. Ms. Wynn. Yes. And I've donated to going on four gallons. Okay. But um, last time I had a problem, I had an irregular heartbeat. And when I went to the doctor and he had her check it over, she says, I gave enough blood. <laughs> <laughs> so they took me off the call list. Okay. Well, thank you anyway for all those donations. Somebody certainly appreciated it. I hope so. Thank you. <laughs> You'd like to identify yourself, please. I'm Audrey Erdl, and I'm the president of the auxiliary. But uh, the VFW has a, na a national home for children. Yes, it's okay. It's been 80 years in existence. It was started in January of 1925. All right. And any veteran whose children need taking care of yes. can go to the, its... Uh, VFW National Home for Children, Waverly Road, Eaton Rapids, Michigan. Okay. And Wisconsin has their own home there. And we we give money to, like a while, oh, a couple years ago, they needed extra bedding, and we donated to buy bedding for the beds in this. And okay. they just had their 80th year celebration. Oh. And if the mother of the children need help, she can go with the children and she lives there with the children. Wow, wow. So this has been going on for 80 years. So is there any particular disease or anything that they are taking care of as a specialty or is it for any? No, they're just taking care of children, just taking veterans' care of... children who ah, need help. Okay, all right. And I have some, um, I get this every month. It's okay. from the National Home. It's called the Patriotic Observer and it tells about uh, the veterans' home. Okay. Right. And I'm sure the Post does their share of donating, too. But right. I know um, we usually get, whenever they need anything, oh, like Halloween party, they ask for a donation. Christmas party, they ask for a donation. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. well, then when they had that special that they needed bedding, yeah, 
So those are the things. Well, and one time, the Wisconsin home needed their plumbing updated, and they were asking for donations. Mm, okay. So see, the state of Wisconsin is responsible for that home. Well, that is the way it is. Uh, yes. They, it's not in Wisconsin. It's in Michigan. It's in Michigan, but, but it's called the Wisconsin home. Ah, okay. Every home there has a name, I think, of the state who takes care of it. I see. Okay. But, uh... Very good. I well, think it's a very good, uh... Well, I would say uh, they're taking care of their own a little bit there. Yes. Thank you. So if Kathy would like to have these, uh... Okay. I get them every month, so right. I'm willing to... Pass them on. Pass them on. Thank you very much. Sure. Use his hand. He's got uh, a few words. Go right ahead. Hi, I'm Jerry Leonard. I just want to add that this veterans' home is fully, wholly, completely supported by the veterans of foreign wars and private donations. There's not one cent of governmental money, social services money, tax money, or any other money. It's completely veterans of foreign wars and, of course, the generous donors that help. Okay. And referring to the Wisconsin cottage, most states have taken on a cottage, that's what they call them there, sure. and they maintain them. Sure. But then there's always money needed for overall. Oh, and this yeah. land was donated in 1925 by a person strictly for that use only. And okay. But I say all those years there has never been a penny of government money of any tax dollar used in that it's wholly and fully supported by the veterans of foreign, foreign wars. Wonderful. Thank you again. Community all the way again. Thank you. And uh, she'd like to say a few words. My name is Kathy Sixel, and I would like to thank the uh, ladies because when we began our Lutheran pioneers at our church, then we also received a fight, and it was Marie who helped was in there when we got installed and so forth. Yeah, and also I was going to say that Don was in service, my uh, late husband, but I could not belong to the auxiliary, nor could he belong to the VFW because it was during peacetime, Willard. Am I saying this correctly? Sorry. When he was in service? And when I was a child, we used to go to those little parades, and you always got a little flag, and you walked on the cemetery, and then it ended up in Kiel, and they always threw a beautiful wreath into the river. What, was there a special meaning for this wreath being thrown into the river, into the Kiel River? Did it have a meaning? Very good. Thank you. Okay, maybe good. somebody Very can answer that for Very me, good, please. Kathy. Good question. Thank you. My name is Jerry Leonard, and referring to the, the wreath, that's a long-standing naval tradition okay. to, uh, to remember any that were lost at sea. To, uh, that's okay. the only monument that you can have for All right. at sea because there's no permanent sure. spot. So, sure. And every year, that's done all over the country on Memorial Day generally, and ah. maybe on Veterans Day where okay. they'll drop the wreath off of a bridge, and that's in remembrance of, uh, and it's supposed to show them floating over the horizon. Ah, very good. Well, that's quite a remembrance there. Thank you. My name is Kathy Sixel, and um, do you throw the wreath off a bridge or something in, in this area? No. no. Not into Fisher Creek or anything like that? No. There's okay. no water. <laughs> There's no water. Okay, I was just wondering. Thank you. Kathy <laughs> Sixel, and this gentleman will answer it. Uh, to answer her question about do we place a wreath in the water? No. And perhaps if we would have lost a area member in the Navy, I'm sure we would have that tradition here, okay. but we don't, didn't lose anyone from the Navy, so it just never became a tradition here. Okay. Okay. Very good. Thank you for answering. With a, qu with a question, rather. Go right ahead. Yeah. Richard Wiegand. Uh, I don't know if this came up in one of the other two meetings, <coughs> but uh, now that we have women serving on active duty at wartime, is the name of the auxiliary going to change if there's a husband who who gets uh, invited in? Is it going to be ladies auxiliary? Or is it going to be auxiliary? Or, or how are you going to handle this? Because it's, it's getting all mixed up now. Yeah. Thank you. Good question. On the floor, and uh, this lady will attempt to answer it. Go right ahead, please. Okay. I believe that will be voted on at the National Convention in August. Okay, and that National Convention, where are they held? A certain spot every no, time? No, they move around. Will okay. it be Milwaukee again this year? Oh, oh, Salt Lake City, Utah. Oh, yeah, Salt Lake City. Okay. Right. Uh, All right. But it's been brought up. All right. The Post does have women 
and who have served. Uh -huh. And uh, so I don't know if we'll let the husband say <laughs> But that's a uh, nationwide thing. Sure. Okay. I understand. Thank you. Good. Mm -hmm. Villery. Yes. And I just wanted to say that after World War II, there were some women that were eligible for the VFW, but the VFW didn't take women at that time. Okay. So they were, they belonged to the auxiliary. Mm -hmm. But now, uh, they take women into the VFW. Okay, good. But one of our members was a whack during World War II, All and right. she even received the Purple Heart. Wow. Would you happen to have her name? Marie Maziak from Newton. Really? Okay, and actually we received the Purple Heart from what war? World War II. Oh, really? She was a, a Jeep driver yes. in London or France, oh. something. Anyway, uh, she was hit. Okay. And she was wounded. All right. So, but see, at that time she wasn't eligible for the, and now she'd rather stay in the auxiliary because okay. she's like 80 or 81 years old. Okay. Yeah, yeah oh, so 85 okay. or more. Okay. But she was in World War II and she was a Jeep driver. And her name, one more time, please. Marie Maziac. Okay. She was Marie Kutz Maziac. Okay. Okay. Very good. Thank you for that. Sure. Go right ahead, please. Uh, my name is Kathy Sixel and Jerry. What branches of services were the, the guys killed if it wasn't nobody from the Navy? And also, your membership is declining. How are you going to continue with all with your organization? As and yet, there's wars. How do you explain this? Okay, okay. thank you. Very good, Kathy. Giving your identification rank wise, please. I am Jerry Leonard. I'm now the post adjutant. Okay. Uh, to answer her question on the men that were killed in the service from this area that we paid prime recognition to, are they were uh, all Army. Okay. Except for Mr. Kane, he was the Air Force. Of course, he was at that time probably called the Army Air Corps. Too, okay, yeah. yes, yes. And how we continue, well, I guess. Uh, Maybe the younger ones, they're starting to join now more, some of the okay. uh, Vietnam veterans. Sure. But uh, you have to also remember, a lot of these organizations, whether they're veteran or fraternal or social, they were a lot of those were formed during hard times, and you took care of your own. If you check way back to the Masons, which is from mm -hmm. several a thousand years old, they yeah. were formed to take care of Masons who were hurt on the job. Oh, and now oh, we have all okay. the government programs, so there is really not that urgent need mm -hmm. to have to go see your fellow person who has the same interests as mm -hmm. you do. Okay. And as far as con continuing on, well. And we always had a saying in the Marine Corps, when the tough get, and going gets tough, the, the tough, tough get, get going. going. So You're that's right. what we're doing now. We're just working that much harder. Very good. Because I think everyone that's now a member, because we have not had any members go out what we call the back door in a number of years, mm -hmm. I think we all firmly, strongly believe in this organization. Right, right. And you've done, you've done wonders, I got to say. Thank you. Matthias, I was just looking through these notes, and years back, like about 19, probably 60 in that neighborhood, we had a teen dance at Stagy's. I remember Adeline's daughter, Lafay, was in charge. What orchestra do we have? Uh, the, I forget what, it was a teen band, like a rock yeah, band, whatever okay. you call it. Yeah. And we made $1,360 really? that night, and we were shocked. Oh, <laughs> I'll tell you. <laughs> you drew them in. We drew them in. I, I can't oh. remember. It, it's an orchestra. Uh, rock group that you heard of lot it was quite new at that point yeah but it got really popular after that so nobody remembers right it, it wasn't our type of music so we <laughs> and then now yeah. our biggest money makers are pork chop dinner oh, okay we grill, the men grill the pork chops outside yes and we uh, last year i think we had like 700 of them wow so that's a big job what? 750. 750 was it? Okay. And because when is that date coming it's up? It's like in September, last, one of the, either the last Sunday or the second last Sunday last. in September, right. depending on when the Packers play. We sort of watch Walk that, that we don't do yes. run yes. into that. Okay. Excellent. Thank okay. you very much. You're welcome. Uh, Richard Wiegand, um, we've mentioned a lot of names of a lot of veterans. Uh, are, you, are you people keeping a list 
somewhere and is it just people who volunteer to join or are there eligible people in the community and what's your territory these kind of questions okay thank you in town of Centerville had 150th anniversary I helped Kathy Sixel with that and I gave her some things now in between there I had made a list of all the Civil War, World War I, World War II, and I think there was also the Vietnam War, veterans from this area who served. Okay. And I have the list there if Kathy's interested. Okay, very good. But I made that list for the town of Centerville when they had their 150th anniversary. I see. Very good. Thank you. I'm sorry, Jerry. Right ahead, Kathy. <laughs> My name is Kathy Sixel. And Audrey, would there be more people on that list now, like that Chuck Kaiser? Would he, he would have I to... I haven't added to the you list. You haven't added to the list. Where do you where did you get the list from? Okay. okay. More from Kathy, and this lady will answer it. Audrey Ertl. I went to the service officer. I went to the uh, historical society. They're the ones that gave me all the names of okay. uh, the... Uh, like the Civil War and World mm -hmm. War One, yes. And there were different areas, different groups that gave me the names. Good. And then when I had them checked, I was told it was pretty accurate. Okay, really good. Thank you. But I haven't added to it, so. All right. And we have uh, a gentleman that died recently. Yes, Charles Kaiser. He and his wife both were in uh, um, Desert Storm and got. Uh, that made them eligible for the VFW, and they were both members of the VFW when he had to go over again. Okay. And that's when he got killed. All right. Okay. And that, and that again, was the Iraqi War or Desert? Uh... This last one, he was killed in this last one in uh -huh. the Iraqi War. Okay. Thank they you. Did. Thank you. Question, go right ahead, please. Uh, Richard Wigand, uh, referring to the list, how long, approximately, how many people are on this list? Okay. And would it be appropriate for us to get the list and maybe read it? I have it. And you have it. I okay, have it. that'd be fine. To read it in, in one of our meetings. Yes, I would you like know, to do that if possible. If it's not, you know, yeah. too long, I mean. All right, thank there you. There were a lot of people, people on, the on weren't there? Yeah. Yeah. Alvin Yenich and on this Marie Bezak, she was wounded in London when there was a bombing. Okay. And she was walking on the street and she was blown into a pub through a glass door. Oh. And she got infection in the face, and she was laid up quite a while. Oh, my goodness. Oh, thank you very much. By the way, how did you learn this information? She told me that herself. Okay, very good. Thank you, buddy. Would, uh, and he'll identify himself. I did it ahead of time. And he's got a, something to present. Yes, I'm Charlie Bauer. And I, when I got the notice from Kathy that we're going to have about the Gold Star Mothers. Well, my first thing is Gold Star Mothers. Let's find out when it started and how it all came about. And, and I did that. And it, it started back in 1917 by an Army Captain Robert Kuisner of the 5th Ohio Infantry. And he had this particular flag here. He designed it and had it patented. And that kind of caught on with the different little states here. And, and this is the one they hung in their window, and he made this because he had two sons in World War I. Now, that was in 1917. In 1918, the Women's Committee of the National Defense went to President Woodrow Wilson, and they wanted to be recognized somehow when they lost somebody in a war. And he said, and, and they wanted to have the women or the men wear a black armband with a gold star on. And then you would know when they were in public that they lost somebody in the war. And that was in 1918. And President Woodrow Wilson wrote a, let it, a letter to this committee, and he coined the phrase Gold Star Mothers. And that got picked up by the news media, and that kind of carried on. Now you had a black armband with a gold star on, and yet you still had in the window this blue star. And what they did with the blue star flag hanging in the window, and they call this the service flag, is they just sold a gold star over the top of this. And that's how that, that gold star mother business started. And then in 19, I got it here someplace, if I can find it. Then in June 4th, in 1928, the gold star mothers got together and decided that they wanted to form a national organization. And they went to Washington, D.C. and did get it incorporated. 
in Washington, D.C. on June 4, 1928, where, to be, where they became the American Gold Star Mother, Inc. And then I have a proclamation here from Franklin Delano Roosevelt, and this took place in June 23rd of 1936, and if I got time, I'd like to read the proclamation sure. here. And it says here, whereas the service rendered the United States by the American mothers is the greatest source of country's strength and inspiration, and whereas we honor ourselves and the mothers of America when we review, revere and give emphasis to the home as the fountainhead of the state, and whereas the American mothers is doing so much for the home and for the moral and spiritual uplift of the people of the United States, and hence so much for good government and humanity, and whereas the American Gold Star mothers suffered the supreme sacrifice of motherhood and the loss of their sons and daughters in world wars, and whereas that the President of the United States is hereby authorized and request to issue a proclamation calling upon the government officials to, the, to display the American flag on all government buildings, and that the people of the United States display the flag and to uphold appropriate meetings in their homes, churches, and other suitable places on the last Sunday in September as public expression of love, sorrow, and reverence of the people of the United States and the Gold Star Mothers. The last Sunday in September shall be hereafter be designated and known as the Gold Star Mother Day, and it shall be the duty of the President to request its observation as possible for this resolution. And that was signed June 23, 1936 by Franklin Delano Roosevelt. I thought it was very interesting. Very good. And you know that I always kind of like to get to the bottom of how things start. And yeah. I didn't realize that it was a combination of two things between the gold star and the, the black armband, how he took the gold star off the black armband and placed it over the service leg of the blue star. Okay. And the, the, the party that had the most blue stars was the Sullivan family, where they had the five stars, they were blue, and then they did all turn gold. So it was, it was a pretty sad thing. Okay. But I have all that information here. If I go pass it around, you can read it. It's quite interesting, the history of it. Thank you, Charlie. Very good. Well done. Go right ahead, please. Um, yeah. Uh, with the Mr. Wiegand. Uh, Richard Wiegand, yes. <laughs> the, uh, I forget who I am once in a while. <laughs> uh, the, who qualifies to be on active duty or active, or I mean, you know, wartime? What, where's the line drawn if... I'm thinking of a lot of situations where, like in Somalia, American servicemen were killed, or the, the SS Cole, uh, you know, a terrorist attack or something like that. Are the, is that considered wartime? Do these people, are they, you know, eligible to be in the VFW or their wives, you know, in okay. auxiliary, this kind of thing? Yeah. Good. Where is the line drawn between okay. a major war okay. declared and some, you know, yes. little thing, skirmish, you know, or skirmish or terrorist attack or something yeah. like that. Okay, very good question. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Jerry Leonard, Cleveland VFW. To answer his question, to put it in a nutshell, if a campaign ribbon has been issued, then you're eligible. But the laws are, as you say, where does it start or stop? Yes. It's very gray because this is controlled by Congress. We're chartered by the United States <coughs> Congress. So it took many years before we were able to get a lot of people after World War II who were very involved in the, or after Korea, or, or after World War II, there was a period of time when they weren't eligible. Okay. And the Cold War was going, and then well, Korea broke out as a major yeah. confrontation. So that was okay. eligibility again. But then after the Korean War until Vietnam, Yep. There were all these little skirmishes, sure. but nothing was really awarded, and yep. Congress would not let the members be, people be members of the Veterans of Foreign Wars. We've been okay. going on and on with that for years and years, sure. and, but, real, but also within the ranks, some say it should be strictly a war, but right. we've been able yeah. to define what the war, what is a war. Yep. Yeah. I understand. Very good. It's, thank it's you. It's a great matter. It's sure. A, well, thank you for clearing part of that up, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Richard Wiegand, uh, we found a picture here of uh, of, of Mrs. Dossler here, um, Bernice, in, in in one of the photo albums. And, okay. And uh, we'd like her to just acknowledge that that's her. And, <laughs> and, uh, and she's with a nurse uniform on, too. Yes. Okay. 
And would you uh, like to give us some timeline on that uh, picture, and he's please? Even wearing a cap. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Look formal. Very formal. Nowadays, you don't see that. Yeah, we don't use those anymore. <laughs> um, that's one of my younger days. I don't can't remember what time this was. No idea. Nothing up there. Uh, could you read off the names that are there, please? You want you want me to read them off? Or oh. Have her read them off. Here, you read them. Mm -hmm. Up loud. Yeah, I got to find them for sure. Mm -hmm. Kathleen Hawk, Betty Lyon, and Laverne Hildebrand, and myself. Okay. And uh, do you remember where this was taken? At what uh, location? This is in Sheboygan. Armory. Okay, at the at Armory? At the Sheboygan Armory, Okay, yes. all right. When they started down there. Okay, okay. Just have big crowds down there. Yes. I'll take one more close-up of that picture, though. <laughs> we don't have a year on this yet. We no. don't have a year. Okay. Thank you. What year this picture was taken of this uh, nurse when she was younger, of course. But uh, she'll give us that date. Go right ahead, please. <laughs> the date was in 1963. Okay, very good. And again, it was at the Sheboygan? At the Sheboygan Armory. Armory, okay. And uh, again, you were doing your duty that time uh, professionally, is that correct? Yes, we used to do uh, blood pressures. I remember when I was drawing blood. Okay. All right, uh, thank you and very much. bottles, whatever they needed. Sure. But one question, and uh, taking histories. We did all the history, and now, now they... Uh, aren't doing it that way anymore. We used to be checking them off ourselves, though. Okay. Patients. And starting in another month or so, it's all going to be computerized. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Go right ahead, please. I'm Charlie Bauer, and I got a question here for the group. When I was looking up about the Gold Star Mothers and, and the, the Blue Servicemen... Hold it. Dr. we got that cleared up, and Mr. Bauer will start out again. You certainly don't care the noise, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Charlie Bauer, and when I was looking up about the Gold Star Mothers and the, the Blue Star Service flag, nowhere did I find of where did that flag come from. If you had a, somebody in service, did you go down to the local uh, reserve board and they just issued you that Blue Star Service flag or did you have to go and, and purchase it someplace so you could have it to hang on your window? I, I'd kind of like to get that information if I could yeah. have anybody here would know. Good question. Good. Who maybe can answer a question that was on the floor. Go right ahead, please. Melvin Yanis, and you bought the flags yourself, but you posted them in the window and if your serviceman was overseas, it was a Silver Star. Oh. And unless they were killed, then it was a gold star. Gold star. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. On the floor, go right ahead, please. I'm Alice Mathias, and I have a question for Charlie. He was talking about um, Roosevelt procl proclaiming that last uh, Sunday in September or whatever. When was that dropped? Because there's nobody else that honors that anymore, right? Okay. I wonder good. how long that was popular. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Got a question right back from the corner. Okay, Charlie Bauer, and we were talking about the, that proclamation that was by Roosevelt in '36, and I also belong to the, the Vietnam Veterans Post, the 371 and the Manitowoc there, and we still honor our Gold Star mothers with a banquet. There is that's still ongoing. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Okay, very good, Charlie. Thank you. Um, identify yourself, please. Richard Wiegand. I understand that uh, Charlie Bauer has a uh, video. Here. I, I didn't bring it. Jerry Yeah, I brought it. Oh, you brought it. Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought it was, was okay. Charlie. <laughs> All right. And it's and it's how long is it? Well, it's uh, it's about 35 minutes. Okay. And uh, it's and it's uh, as far as what it's about, it pertains to the war effort in I believe World War II, what all the people did to uh, provide the materials and so forth before the war efforts, and about the ladies who took part in things where the men could not anymore. So okay. if you'd be interested, it would be available. Well, we should, we should, I think if, you know, if we don't have hundreds of pressing questions, we should okay. fit that in somewhere. And the All other right. thing I want to do at the end is I want to take a group photo like I did okay. a couple months ago when we had, you know, the VFW over in the, yes. in the other building. Okay. And that turned out pretty well. Right. Okay. So I'd like okay. to do a group photo of everybody here at the end of this meeting before okay. anybody leaves. So, okay. 
Okay, very good. All right. Go ahead, please. Jerry Leonard, in regard to this gold star yes. uh, wives, yes. or uh, I, the, uh, the DAV magazine had an article in, it's just in the thought stage, but okay. it seems in a few years I think there will be an organization. What it'll be called, I don't know, but or they okay. probably don't know, but I think it will be something to mem remember. Uh, gold star wives. Okay. Because there are a lot of them that right, right. Uh, are married and they have been killed or died in sure. service. So, yeah. Something will happen, but it'll probably be a while. Okay. I just got one question, and I don't know how it's related. This new national memorial that's in Washington, D.C. now, with all the uh, theater, war theaters in the Pacific and the European War and so forth. Now they have these, I'm guessing, what is it, 1,000 or 4,000 rather, gold stars on this one wall, which represents the deaths of the soldiers and people in the, those wars. And I believe that adds up to about 400,000. Does that gold star in that area mean something uh, related to the gold star that they talk about for the mothers and so forth? Yes, that should represent. Yeah, Jerry Leonard, that should represent each and every fallen soldier. Okay. Or military person. Right, right. And that's uh, how accurate it is. That, okay. But that is the, the general idea. All right. One star for every person. Okay. Uh, have you visited? No, no. I, I think that star represents a thousand. Right. Oh, a thousand. A thousand. Yeah, yeah, one yeah for every you're right. Soul. That's correct. Uh, have you that's ever it. visited that? No, I've never been to Washington for that. Okay. Very good, thank to be you. Real honest, I haven't had the courage. <laughs> <laughs> it can be tough, I'm sure. Thank you. To identify yourself and go right ahead, please. I'm Florence Chris, and you're talking about the banners for the wives or the mothers. Yes. My daughter-in-law got one when her son was in, and his wife did too. It's a regular banner like this. Could you, you know? describe it a little bit? Uh, what it? What's a rectangular thing? Didn't the VFW a while back had some doings? at the Vets Club, and I thought you mentioned those banners. Okay. And then they get little ones they can wear on, wear their, on their, their clothing or right, whatever? Their, I can't really describe it, what yeah. it's like. Okay. But uh, they have those banners for them. Okay, very good, Rick Florence. Thank you very much. For the much. Iraq War. Yes, okay, great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Crap books that they provided for right. review. Do it again. Okay. All right, so everybody just smile. Relax, smile. <laughs> okay. Cheese. All right. Uh, one, two, three. Then I'm going to get a little closer. <laughs> All right. All right. One, two, three. I'm going to do one more. Oh, Have you got the flag? Yep. Flag is in there. Okay. Otherwise, I'll push it closer. No, no, no. It's okay. I'll do it. All right. We'll try it again. One, two, three. Okay. Jerry. Okay. Audrey Ertl. Audrey Ertl, thank you. Arlene Schneider. Thank you, Arlene. Marie Leonard. Thank you, Marie. Lorraine Schwinn. Thank you. Bernice Dassler. Thank you. Adeline Cole. Thank you. Kathy Yannig. Thank you. Alice Mathias. Thank you, Alice. Okay, very good. I'm gonna, hopefully nobody's behind me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna put a date. Okay, I'm going to do a pan, so just be patient with me a little bit here. <laughs> 